Welcome to Electron Online. Now here's another very interesting point we're going to look at, which is how does light travel? And it turns out that light travels along the path that takes the least amount of time to get from point A to point B. In order to understand that, let's think about the dilemma of a lifeguard. Let's say a lifeguard is at the beach, close to the water's edge, and some distance away there's a swimmer that's in trouble. Looks like may be drowning, and so the lifeguard needs to go save that swimmer. Now, there are different paths in which the lifeguard can make it to the swimmer, but obviously the lifeguard wants to get there as fast as possible. So the shortest path would be directly jump in the water and swim along this path, but of course a lifeguard can't swim as fast as a lifeguard can run. So perhaps the lifeguard should run along the beach until it gets to the point directly across from where the swimmer is, then jump in the water and swim to the to the person who is in trouble. But that's not the right thing to do either because even though you can run a lot faster, this path is longer and actually takes longer time as well. The best thing to do is to run a certain distance then stop before you get to this point right here, then jump in the water in this direction and that will allow the lifeguard to reach the swimmer in the shortest amount of time. And we can actually do a calculation of that to figure out where exactly the lifeguard would have to jump into water. But that's without doing any calculations, the lifeguard would do something close to that to get there as quickly as possible. So, how does that relate it to light? Well, it turns out that light does kind of the same thing, like a lifeguard. Let's say you want to shine light from some source to a point in here. And let's say that on this side, the light is in the air, and on this side, the object you want to shine light on is inside a block of glass. Notice that the index of refraction for air is about 1 and for glass is about 1.56. Which, as we know when we study physics, we realize that when light crosses the boundary from one material that has an index of refraction that's different from another material, the light will bend either away or towards the normal. And in this case, since we're going from a low to a high index of refraction, the light will bend to the normal. So light cannot travel directly from the source across the boundary, unchanging direction to get to the object. Light will not do that. Light will also not go from here all the way to here to the point directly across and then shine on the object, which you would say maybe light should do that because light travels faster in air and slower inside glass. It turns out, just like with the lifeguard, if light shines in this direction and then changes direction when it wants to go in, into the glass and then reaches the object over there, this path will take the least amount of time for the, for the uh, light to get from here to here, from the source to the object. And so that's the path that light will take. Light will ta take the path that takes the least amount of time, not the shortest path, Maybe not the path that seems logical because it could travel faster in air than in, in glass, so maybe it should go this way. No, no. Light will do exactly the same as a lifeguard. Take the path that will take the least amount of time. Now let's go over to this picture right here because over 100 years ago, Einstein claimed that light was affected by gravity. That, of course, is a big problem because, according to Newton, for objects to be affected by gravity, well, the objects have to have mass, and we know that light does not have mass. So, when the light comes from a different distant star and ends up traveling right past the sun and on its way to the earth, the light will actually change direction, just like the light will change direction when it crosses a boundary from a low index of refraction to a high index of refraction. But here, it appears to be affected by gravity, causing it to change direction. Well, it turns out that if we were to do a calculation, I bet that the path that light takes, again, will be the fastest path, the path that takes the least amount of time. So, what is it then that causes light to bend? When it's in space, traveling past a very massive object like the sun. Is it because there's some gravitational attraction caused on an object like light that doesn't have mass? Or is it because there's a change in the index of refraction of space as you get close to a large object, which causes light then to bend because light wants to take the path that takes the least amount of time? That may be the explanation we need to understand how light bends 
around heavy objects and of course how it causes gravitational lensing. In gravitational lensing, well when the lens, we have a glass lens, you have this bending of light through the lens because of the difference of index of refraction and maybe that's exactly what's happening in space. Something to think about. Light takes the path that takes the least amount of time and that is the mystery of the universe.